Tacos. Welcome back to another video. It's a different one. Let's talk taco. All right. I haven't done one of these videos in a very, very, very long time. And I figured, uh, why not? Since you guys asked so many questions and uh, some of you guys just don't read the description. But let me help you guys out. All right. So in this video, I'll be covering leader line, the main line, snaps, and um, knots what knots i use so let's talk about leader first so you guys are wondering what kind of leader do i use do i use floral do I use mono but the answer is i use floral strictly floral people use mono i got nothing against that i like to have no stretch in my line so floral was the only way i can do it which is um i i go from braid to floral my knot is the uni to uni knot but if you guys are wondering what kind of floral i use i use in the beginning, I was using Seeger Red Label. This is what I started with, and I've never swapped to anything else. I tried other stuff like uh, I tried Sunline, which is way too damn expensive. I tried the uh, Abraze X or Invis X or whatever. I don't really need to spend that much on Leader. It's just I just think it's just uh, it's just overkill when you spend like 30, 40 bucks for a spool of Leader, and I don't you I don't. I don't buy the small leader packs, which is like what, 15 bucks, 20 bucks for about like 20, 30 yards. I usually just buy the whole damn spool, either from Walmart, Big Five, Dick Sporting Goods, or your local tackle shop. But I recommend getting them from your local tackle shop because you know you want to support your local shops. But Seager Red Label is what I use, and the poundage I, I was using is usually 20 pound, 15 pound, or 12 pound. But I always gravitate towards 20 pound because fishing the bay here, you never know what you're going to hook up on. You can hook up from uh, sharks, bat rays, uh, spotties that have really, really good teeth, calicos, uh, all kinds of stuff out here. Halibut, Corvina, Bonito, anything with teeth really, or anything that's going to take you down into cover. So I always gravitate towards 20 pound floral. So this is the Seager Red Label. And that's, that's what I was using before, but I upgraded over to the Majorcraft Dangan Floral Shock Leader. This is 25 pounds. This is the smallest size I believe they make. 100% floral, and so far, I'm loving it. And I've had bass taking me under, taking me between kelp, taking me along the rocks, digging into heavy structure, and barely any frays. No disappointment yet. And I still have, I believe the longest I've gone was maybe three weeks without retying a new leader. Just, it just got shorter and shorter throughout the time. I haven't had to retie a new leader in yeah, in about a month. So I recommend the new Major Craft Dangan Shock Leader Floral Carbon. If not, if you can't find it, check out Seeger Red Label. They have this pretty much everywhere. Seeger is a really, really, really known brand. They're known for their floral carbon. I believe maybe they're, they're mono. I don't know if they have mono. Don't take my word for it. But it's never disappointed. That's what I've been using for years until Major Craft came out with their own. I've been testing it and I recommend it to everyone if you can get your hands on this. So why floral? No stretch and technically or hypothetically speaking, uh, the science claims that floral is invisible in water compared to braid obviously and monofilament and it's virtually invisible. Fish can't see it. I, I'm not a fish, so I don't go underwater and hold the line out and be like, hey, yo, uh, I can't see this shit. So that's that's another, you know, pros of fluorocarbon and line memory. It doesn't have much memory whatsoever. So let's, let's try it with Seeker because I don't want to waste that. Not much memory at all. With fluoro, not much memory. If it was monofilament, the way it's spooled on and you pull it out, that memory will stay that way pretty much forever. No matter how how much you uh, pull on it, keep it tight, it'll still coil up really bad. But with floral, well, unless you soak it in warm water, your spool, then maybe, maybe it will lose its memory. But I don't recommend doing that. A lot of guys do it. I don't. I don't need to because I never spool any of my reels full floral ever. I fish braid and strictly braid to leader, obviously. So I can pull on this as hard as I can. Look, no memory. If it was mono, that thing would have coiled right back up real quick due to stretch. 
line memory sucks we all know that as far as knots and main line i use braid before i was running j braid x8 in sartreuse it's similar to the power pro slick but i seem to like um the x8 a lot better than power pro super slick a lot of guys use super slick they don't have issues with it i've had many issues with super slick don't know why but it, it just don't like me right now i'm running nothing but 30 to 35 pound dangan major cuff braid i believe you can fit about 180 yards of this line the specific line onto like a shimano Caius or casita and i've already had a couple guys using this in the surf and they love it all right, so it's ultra thin. Let me see the measurements on this. Um, this is actually 30 pounds rated at 1.5 PE. That's how the Japanese guys, um, you know, rate their lines, rate their braid. This is 200 meters. So let me do the math, 200 meters, all right? 200 meters is equivalent to 218 yards. I use one of these on one hole, 100 size reel. I mean, there's barely any left on here. So 218 yards or 220, you want to round it off. I fit a whole lot, like about 200 to 215. So you guys do the math there. So for my connection knot from braid to floral or mono, whatever you guys use, um, let me show you guys how I do it. Zoom in. I always leave the line on the spool. So my uni to uni knot, I got my floral tag in right here, laid right on top of my braid tag in right here. So what I do is make a loop with the floral. I do five wraps that goes into that loop. You can wet your line. and cinch it so that's the floral again I'm sorry if you guys can't see that but I'm trying so I did five wraps for the braid side I double it I do ten due to the braid being a lot smaller or thinner in diameter so, same deal make that loop right there go over okay so from you out 10 loops same thing cinch it slowly with your line cinch it up with the middle between the knots and hold both main ends floor on one hand braid in the other be careful when you pull tight you can cut yourself with a braid you can wear gloves you can wear rings whatever they got all kinds of stuff to tie knots with so let's cinch it just like that Boom. Look how small that knot is. You clip off the tag ends. Obviously, I don't have any cutters on me. But you clip that off. And there you go. That's the knot. I don't tie FG knot. I don't tie blood knot. Any other knot. I don't know. There's hundreds of other knots. But I've been using the uni to uni knot for years. I mean, years. And how long is my leader? I don't like my knot going through the guides of the rod at all. Guys do, guys don't, I don't know. It messes up my cast. So I do about, let me measure that. This is about two feet, two feet leader right here. Two foot leader. Boom, right there, that's my leader. That's long enough for me to cast without the nut going through the guides. You know, that's that's what I'm after. I don't like not going through guides at all. And it messes up my cast, like I mentioned. But you guys should give it a try. And yeah, two foot leader. You need a uni knot, five wraps on floral, 10 wraps on braid. That's all I do. You can do seven, 14, 10, 20, up to you, depending on how, how you want to tie it. All right, so I covered the floral carbon and braid and what I use pretty much. So next, let's move over to snaps. Snap swivels or snaps or clips, whatever you guys want to call them. There's um, there's two types I use. There's the tactical snaps. So you guys check that out right there. So these are the tactical snaps. You can find them on Amazon called tactical snaps, clips, whatever. Uh, it'll be in the description below. Be sure to check that out. And there's the standard snaps. 
So these snaps are plain and simple. You just unclip it, opens up and grab a jig head, feed it through the guide and boom. So you guys are wondering why do I use snaps? When I'm out on the water, especially fishing the bay and you have, you know, top water in your bag, jerk bait in your bag, jig heads in your bag, underspin, blades, irons, all that stuff. You never know what's gonna happen on the water. You can run into a school of mackerel, you can run into a school of bonito, you can run into all kinds of stuff out there. Lizardfish, I don't know what the hell. So you wanna be able to switch your bait real quick. So let's say for instance, I start off with a jig head with a grub and I see boils. I ain't got time to cut that off retie and freaking cast out because that one to two minute window you can lose that bite you can lose that fire that's out there so you guys keep that in mind clips are always a plus but you gotta get some good ones i use the hook main tackle clips they provide them at the shop but before that i was using owner hooks and i carry or i use various sizes depending on the jig heads or depending on where i'm fishing obviously these big boys are for irons they're rated to like 40 50 pounds and the smaller ones are rated to like 22 to 40 pounds then i got the really small ones which are well, they're not really small they're just thinner wire which is from 17 to 30 pounds this is good for smaller jig heads like you know like a standard swimming jig head and yeah i mean you can use snaps on pretty much anything and everything you can use you can use it on the blade bait spins and top water jerk bait and so on these top water baits and jerk baits and irons and jig power spins and all that stuff comes with their own clips and split rings i remove them i, don't, I never use the stock split rings i never use the stock uh, snaps ever this is actually the stock snap for the Jig Paris spin right here. And I've had many of them bend out on me, so I always, always use my own snaps from owner, P-Line, or your local tackle shop, custom snaps or whatever. So those snaps are really geared towards anything and everything. But if I'm out, let's say, surf fishing or strictly throwing anything above 25 gram, anything above an ounce and a half two ounce i move over to these tactical clips because everything you're going to throw is a whole lot bigger so if, with these all you have to do there's an opening right here slide on boom done the snaps and swivels and clips or whatever you guys use acts as a split ring so it gives your you know your bait more real estate it gives it more play more action more natural look um, yeah that's how i see it so let's say boom, okay, top water drop biting, but I know there's a boil there. So you wanna switch it out real quick. Grab a jerk bait. Boom, on, jerk bait, done. Oh shoot, they're, they're not hitting the jerk bait. Let's switch to the top water again. Boom, done. These are rated up to 40 pounds, the ones I have. These are from Amazon Tactical Clips or Tactical Snaps, what the hell ever. Description below, be sure to check that out again. So. That's what I use as far as snaps and swivels and whatever you guys want to call it. Let's move on to what knot I use to tie to my clips or my snaps. So let's find a big, all right, got the biggest one I can find. I tie Palomar knot, that's all I tie. Easy, simple, proven to be strong because my biggest yellowtail, which was like 35 pounds, was caught on actually, <laughs> It was 17 pound fluorocarbon, red label. Same deal, two foot leader, live lining of freaking chovy or sardine. I don't remember, it was, it was years ago. But all I did was to run it through, Palomar knot, it's pretty easy. There's plenty of tutorials on how to tie a Palomar knot to your bait, to your hooks, to your jig head, whatever you're using. So that's, that's literally the only knot I use ever for anything and everything. Boom, Palomar knot. To me, proven to be one of the strongest knots in the game. 
There's other knots you can do, whatever knots, you know, you guys enjoy tying or like tying, like the uni knot works works fine. Palama works just as good. Uni to uni, blah, 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 all that stuff. So that pretty much covers talking about snaps, clips, what main line I use, what fluorocarbon leader I use. And yeah, I mean, I hope this video was informative and I hope uh, you guys consider on trying these tactics out, these clips, these dope ass tentacle clips or your local shop snaps, owner snaps. Give them a shot if you guys don't want to waste any time in the water, be in the water as much as you can. The longer you are in the water, the more you're in the water, the chances of you getting bit is a lot higher. So don't waste your time retying unless you have like 10 rods out on a boat or 10 rods out right by you where everything is tied differently from like a top water to a jerk bait to an iron to whatever the hell else. Also, one more one more tip for you guys. So for instance, let's say you guys are throwing irons. Worked fine for me, and a lot of people swear on it. So let me show you an example. A lot of people usually tie the iron right at the bait. Me, I tie or clip it right on the sis hook. Like that. I get it right on a sis hook. Why? Because think about it. If you hook up onto a fish, a big one, a good one, a three pound bonito, a two pound bass, a 13 inch bass, 10 inch bass, whatever the hell you're fishing for, if they hit the assist hook and you're hooked up, it's you over here, which is the clip, and the fish. That's it. That's what's connecting you guys. You hook fish. You don't want to have a lot of play. When it's, when it's snapped directly to the bait. Let me show you guys. So fish is on the hook, you have that play. It's gonna be whipping around, giving it an opportunity for the fish to, you know, pop off or give an opportunity for the actual bait to move up and slide right off. It's happened to me many times, so I swapped it and played around and next thing you know, it, it's, a lot, it's a whole lot better when you actually have it tied or clip directly onto the solid ring and maybe uh, land more fish that way. So that's gonna sum up today's video. Hopefully you guys find this video very informative and take everything I showed you guys here into consideration and give it a shot out on the water. You guys let me know in the comments if there's anything else you guys want me to cover. Drop a comment below, smash a thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, give me a thumbs up and there's really nothing else for me to explain with what I have in front of me besides clips, snaps, baits, and leader line, main line, and you guys. So, thanks a lot for watching. Again, I appreciate every single one of you guys. You guys are the true MVPs. As always, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Good fishing. Peace the hell out.